Welcome in the name of Jesus. We are beginning the fourth Sunday of Easter, traditionally known as Good Shepherd Sunday. You heard that as Mr. Bill was introducing the theme, the musical theme of our hymn of the day. Uh, we have one change in the bulletin, one of those things that occasionally happens. The opening hymn is correct, and then it's repeated where the hymn of the day, the sermon hymn is. So we'll actually turn to the correct hymn number that's listed there, hymn 456. So for the sermon hymn, you'll need to open your green books and sing hymn 456, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. That's the only change. On Good Shepherd Sunday, all the lessons, all the music, it's all about Jesus, the Good Shepherd in the Old Testament. God is the shepherd of his people. And we'll hear about that in Ezekiel. And Ezekiel uh, brings the word of the Lord, saying to the people, the reason that Israel ended up in exile, the reason that uh, Judah ended up in exile was because they had bad shepherds, namely bad kings. The Lord is the king, the Lord is the shepherd, and we'll actually say that in the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. Let us rise for the confession of sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you make possible the return of those who stray by revealing your true and only light. May all who profess the name of Christ reject all other lords and follow him as the people of his pasture. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the word of God. The first lesson is from Ezekiel 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. And I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it, As was, it was in the beginning, the beginning is, is now, now and, and ever shall be, world, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. The second lesson is in 1 John chapter 3. This is how we have come to know love. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we also should lay down our lives for our brothers. Whoever has worldly wealth and sees his brother in need, but closes his heart against him, how can God's love remain in him? Dear children, let us love not only with word or with our tongue, but also in action and truth. This is how we know that we are the truth and how we will set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. We also receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commands and do what is pleasing in his sight. This, then, is his command, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another just as he commanded us. The one who keeps his commands remains in God and God in him. This is how we know that he remains in us. We know it from the spirit whom he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us rise. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired man, who is not a shepherd, does not own the sheep. He sees the wolf coming, leaves the sheep, and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the sheep and scatters them. Because he works for money, he does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I also have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. Then there will be one flock and one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it up again. This is the commission I received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated and turn in the back of your bulletins to page 9, continuing on a Luther's small catechism with this section on daily prayers, this time how to ask a blessing before eating. So how the head of the family should teach his household to offer a blessing. The children and members of the household shall go to the table reverently, fold their hands and say, we say together, the eyes of all look to you, O Lord, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Psalm 145, 15 and 16. Then shall be said the Lord's Prayer and the following, Lord God, Heavenly Father, bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bountiful goodness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in our household, we then uh, after joining hands, say, Gesegnet to Maltzeit, blessed be our mealtime. The text for the sermon is the Old Testament reading. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God names bad shepherds. We learn from reading 1 Samuel that God is king. He is the shepherd of his people. When Israel insisted they wanted to have an earthly king like all their neighbors, the prophet Samuel warned them that having kings would be their undoing. For all too often kings and leaders of every sort let that go to their heads. We also learn from reading 1 Samuel that, that good kings know that they are princes. They know that God is the true king. So good kings lead the people in keeping the Sinai covenant. Good kings shepherd the people with their eyes on the shepherd king. Now this is very difficult to translate into the American experience where we do not have a theocracy such as God's people were intended to, to have in the promised land. We have a democracy, actually a democratic republic. And this is not the promised land. They lived in the promised land. Uh, America is not the new Israel. Our presidents are not chosen by God. Our presidents are chosen by the people. And our presidents may invoke God, as all of them do at one time or another, but often the God they invoke is not the biblical God, but rather a God that conforms to their own political vision. In other words, selective reading of Scripture. This is why the psalmist reminds us in Psalm 146, verse 2, do not put your trust in princes. They'll disappoint you. Why? We live in a death-denying, itchy-eared, narcissistic culture that frequently, when it talks about justice, it's a comeuppance for those who do not share my worldview. So, as with all bad theology, bad Bible reading, the problem begins when I think I'm in charge, the autonomous self. 
And then I decide to create a God who shares my commitments. That this God fawns over me. This God will destroy my enemies. On the other hand, the one true biblical God declares every one of us as an old Adam or an old Eve, which is that old sinner inside each of us. We are born dead in our trespasses, Paul writes to the Ephesians. And left to ourselves, left on our own, we will die in our trespasses. So that means that if you put a gaggle of old sinners together, then you end up with a world of hurt. So God's justice is not selectively focused on my enemies. Rather, remember, justice is getting what you deserve. And that's not good news for sinners. All of us are sinners. Justice is not good news, although sometimes you hear Christians talk about it as if justice were good news. No, no, no. Through Ezekiel, God names the bad shepherds as the kings who were all about themselves. He says they grow fat and strong at the expense of the people. Well, for us, if we try to translate that into our experience, it's not hard to think of all those who benefited from the COVID pandemic. First of all, St. Anthony of Fauci. Then the politicians, the pharmaceutical companies, the mega wealthy online merchants, you know, Amazon, Walmart, etc., and all the techie parasites that made it possible. And even many bad bishops who marched in lockstep with politicians said, we got to shut down all the churches. And churches that kowtowed to that, St. Matthew's wasn't one of those. Bad shepherds scattered the flock through fear. Bad shepherds dole out money that's not theirs. Bad shepherds are undone by their own greed and covetousness. And that's the way it was. First for the northern kingdom of Israel, when it was conquered by Assyria. And then the southern kingdom of Judah, which was conquered by the Chaldeans, whose capital was Babylon. Judgment. God's justice fell on his people. Ezekiel says because they were led astray by bad shepherds who did not fear, love, and trust God above all else. So God's justice was not good news for Israel and Judah. God's justice was judgment. They got what they asked for. They got what they deserved. We should say, politicians, beware. Corporate leaders, beware. Bishops, pastors, lay leaders, beware. People of God, beware, because bad shepherds of every sort will get what they deserve, and all the people who follow them will be scattered and will get lost. This is God's word through the prophet Ezekiel. Now, Jesus is the good shepherd. Okay, I'm going to start meddling. This may come as a shock to many, but Jesus is not a Democrat, and Jesus is not a Republican. Jesus is not an American. Jesus is not a Lutheran or the non-denominational boyfriend. Jesus is Lord. He is God in a crucified, resurrected, ascended Jewish male body. He was circumcised. Jesus will not be co-opted by politicians or bishops or pastors or lay leaders who would remake him into a God that shares my commitments and considers my enemies to be his. We say it every week in the creed. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. And that's when God's justice will prevail for those who keep on insisting on getting what they deserve. But for the strayed, the injured, the weak, Jesus is the good shepherd whose grace and mercy are good news because grace is getting what we don't deserve. And mercy is not getting what we do deserve. Jesus' good news is grace and mercy. It is not justice. Justice is God's judgment. Jesus took God's justice upon himself, what we deserved. He bore my sins, your sins. So selective reading of scripture, which always begins with me, 
leads to bad Bible reading, leads to bad theology. So if the lens through which I read scripture is my definition of what it means to be God, well, God's going to end up looking a lot like me. And that's how folks end up with a socialist Jesus or maybe a capitalist Jesus, a Democrat Jesus, a Republican Jesus, an American Jesus, a Global South Jesus, etc. If I start with me, then my Jesus looks a lot like me. And that's not Jesus. In my baby boom childhood, late 1950s, early 1960s, there were at least 35 kids living on our block. There were 22 houses and at least 35 kids. And on summer evenings, we would play games until almost dark. Now, all the big kids loved to play hide and seek. Hey, let's play hide and seek. And they always picked one of the little ones to be it. Because then they would hide where the little kids couldn't find them, and that was the point. They didn't want to be found. Have you ever noticed how many people are still playing that game today? They're scattered. They're lost. They don't know it. In other words, they don't want to be found by the good shepherd because he would claim them. When Jesus claims you, then you're no longer your own. You're no longer in charge. He is. So you see, the fat and the strong are not just the rich and the famous. The fat and the strong are those who fancy themselves to be in charge, whether it's on a grand scale or something very small and intimate, whether it's in the White House or the State House or even the outhouse. If you're young, in case you missed it, that's the place you go potty when you don't have plumbing. The fat and strong don't want Jesus to be their good shepherd. And they really want Jesus to stay out of anything important like my daily life. For the weak, the injured, the scattered, which is every one of us born dead in our trespasses, the Lord Jesus comes to live the totally obedient life none of us can live. He comes to die the totally innocent death that none of us can die, that we might be his own. Jesus did not come simply to get our vote, to get our money, to get anything we have. He came to rescue us from sin and death and evil. He doesn't need anything from us. He wants all of us because apart from him, we're all lost and condemned. Baptized into his death and glorious resurrection, we're no longer our own. We are his. So his sheep gather strays. If you're older, you likely have children, grandchildren, siblings, friends who are strays. Some claim to be Christians, but worship a lot of other gods day by day. Some claim to be, I love this one, spiritual but not religious, which, which means they don't want a good shepherd to claim them as his. Some sort of dabble in God, which means that occasionally a little Jesus, you know, is necessary, kind of like a booster shot. But really it's all about work or play or money or politics or pleasure or play. That's what they fear, love, and trust, not Jesus. What can we do about that? Well, we pray daily, right? Pray daily for them. And we invite them to worship. We don't nag, we invite. And then we watch and we wait for opportunities. When all those gods they fear, love, and trust fail them. And all those gods must fail them. So in the interim, let your faith be genuine. That as much as possible, you show them that Jesus is your good shepherd. Ask for forgiveness as you're able. Practice forgiveness as you've been forgiven. And when you run into a wall of childish intransigence, you know those stubborn insisting on staying lost, then you pray and you ask for others to pray for them by name. Dave's handed out those cards, Diane's handed out those cards that he put on all those names of people that are needing to be in worship and aren't, and you pray for them. Remember, the Lord God of old let his people discover to their own regret what happens when they trusted in bad shepherds and did not fear, love, and trust God above all else. 
That's how they ended up in exile. Now, very briefly tonight, take note that maybe you hadn't thought about this. God really is in charge of our congregation's disaffiliation from the ELCA. North Carolina Senate is not in charge. Remember how in the Old Testament when Pharaoh did not let God's people go? It wasn't because the Lord was powerless. Pharaoh thought he was in charge, and so he had to be broken. Everyone born dead in his or her trespasses, that's you and me, has to learn that before the one true God, all of us are weak, all of us are injured, all of us are scattered, and God knows we need a good shepherd. Everyone needs a good shepherd, and Jesus is that good shepherd. Now, during his earthly ministry, remember this. I hope you've read this in the New Testament. Before he was glorified, meaning crucified, resurrected, ascended, before that, the Lord Jesus did not heal all the sick. He did not restore all the broken. He did not feed all the hungry. He did not raise all the dead. Whenever he did mighty works, it always accompanied his teaching and pointed to who he is, not was, because he still is. The good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep. He died for you. He died for me. He died for all, that all may be his. So when we're his through baptism, into his saving death, into his glorious resurrection. Our lives are no longer our own. Paul says that, right? I've been crucified with Christ. And it is now no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. You see, his father doesn't need our good works, but our neighbors do. The Holy Spirit enables our lives to be marked by loving service. Now, not as the neighbor wants, but as God loves as God wants. We love because he first loved us. We gather strays because that is indeed God's good and gracious will. It's what he wants his sheep to do. We follow the good shepherd to the table where here he feeds us with his own true body, his own most precious blood. We follow our good shepherd and we show others that he's the only one who gives eternal life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please turn in your hymnals 456. Hymn 456.
we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray with the Lord Jesus Christ for the unity and renewal of his church on earth, for bishops Eaton and Smith, for Francis, Bartholomew, and all bishops, especially those who have gone astray, for all pastors, including Samuel Zumwa, Marvin Shedler, Robert Coupler, Peter Hoyer, Michael Bergbauer, Joel Kettner, and Carl Voges, for our parish deacon Robert Shivers, for all church work use and musicians, for Stephen ministers, for the people of God, and for all people according to their needs. Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, crucified for our salvation and raised bodily from the dead, so that your Holy Spirit may raise our bodies from the dead to share with all the faithful your eternal life and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray that by your Holy Spirit's work in word and sacraments, we may show this dying world that we are your baptized children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will through your son's saving death, set your church free from this dying world's dynamic quest for the power and glory that belongs to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray that all our neighbors may be drawn by the witness of our lives to the water of holy baptism, and so be made your dear children through your son, Jesus, is a saving death and joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for every life born and unborn. Guard and protect all pregnant women and their babies. We give you thanks for the birthdays of Butch Rufel, Janet Hall, Jim Morris, Dwight Krim, and Gregory Borstad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask your blessings upon all newlyweds, including Gabriella Staple and Andrew Sheridan, and upon husband and wives, that they may love and serve each other as Christ loves and serves his bride, the church. We give you thanks for all those celebrating wedding anniversaries, including Pastor Marv and Marcy Shedler, Butch and Karen Rufel, Dwight and Janet Krim, and Mike and Mandy Harrington. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray healing for Emily Coupler Burke, Fran Shrivers, Shivers, Pastor Bob and Lois Coupler, Lucy Harmonious, Tina Medlin, Donna Adams, Marty and Frank Felter, Todd and Tracy Dornell, Dennis and Janet Hall, Ed Ludeker, Maggie Hoyer, Erlene Carlisle, Elaine Willow, Sheila Leach, Alexander Schwartz, Arthur and Barbara Moore, John Tullius, Steve Laughlin, Carol Kaminsky, George Taft, Sarah Schneider, Albert Rossetti, Howard and Lonnie Boyerman, Aris Moles, Cindy Harms, Wanda Valentino, Scott Howell, 
Vic Weidman, David Reese Miller, Aline Curzon. For our shut-ins, for all who are suffering, for the dying and the grieving, especially the Baldwin family at Heidi's death, and the family of Joyce Seebeck Montag, and for those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, you see your broken world as weak, wounded, and scattered. Grant us grace joyfully to come to the table to receive the true body and most precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd, knowing that in him we have forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, dear Father, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. Welcome and good evening. There is a black folder in your pews or chairs. Please note that there is now a place to check that you are communing. Please, as you're passing that down the row and signing in, be sure to check if you are communing tonight. Uh, the church picnic is next Sunday. There is a uh, an easel out at the far end of the commons, and uh, we ask that you sign up. How many are coming? Uh, there will be hamburgers, cheeseburgers, hot dogs provided, and asking you to bring sides or desserts, and please to put those down what you intend to bring, and there will be also uh, sodas and water. So uh, please uh, sign up. This is a great opportunity with across all the, the several services that people get a chance to see one another and to visit. Next Saturday is our new disciples class at 9 a.m. That's for those new to the Lutheran Church, maybe even new to Christianity, and it is part of the process for joining, but you don't uh, have any strings attached by attending. In other words, we're not expecting that you join if you're not ready to join, but it's part of the process. So please let Donna know if you're planning to come next Saturday. Mother's Day coming up in just a few weeks. There are yellow forms out on the usher's table outside the door. There is also an insert there describing where the money's going. First Fruits Ministry that has been working with the poor locally for years is doing a special sponsor, a survivor of human trafficking. And so the suggested donation is $10 for each person that's honored or remembered. I've got uh, six names down here for clear. So we'll make a $60 gift to uh, that uh, First Fruits Ministries for Mother's Day. Also, I wanted to um, mention that um, the Paul Phi, that's how he says it, Pal Phi in German, will be here May the 5th from Leipzig, Germany. That's Bach's hometown. And he'll be playing a free concert at 4 p.m. You don't need tickets. Please invite your friends. Um, he's a marvelous uh, talent and uh, only 25 years old and incredible. Bill has been playing some of his arrangements. He's very, very talented. You'll be sorry if you miss it because, uh, again, he's coming from Germany and playing several churches on the East Coast. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us greet one another with God's peace.
Let us pray. Gracious Father, it is your glory that you can overcome the wildness of your sheep. When we offer you our gifts, confessing joy for the safety of your fold, show us what profits we can bring, bring you when we no longer stray. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We give you thanks, dear Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you've sent in this end of the ages to save and to redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word inseparable from you. Through him you created all things, and in him you take delight. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. It is he, our Lord Jesus, who fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. It is he who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection, taking bread and giving thanks to you. He said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Remembering then his holy incarnation, his life, death, and resurrection, we lift this bread and cup before you, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. And we ask in now your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of your church and gather into one all who share this, the true body and the most precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, all glory and honor are yours, almighty Father, with your Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Amen. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. May this your body strengthen and preserve me unto eternal life. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the cup of salvation and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and so shall I be saved from all my enemies. May this your blood strengthen and preserve me unto eternal life. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner.
tonight we receive only by intention, so you'll take your host and dip into the cup and then consume. Come, for all is now ready. George, this is the true body of Christ given into death for you, and this is his most precious blood shed for you. Amen.
Let us rise. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most precious blood strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Good shepherd from heaven, accept our joy and thanksgiving for the table you have prepared. Sustain us through this blessed food for faith and service till we rest and feast in your eternal home. We bless you now and evermore. Amen. I will strive to pray daily, worship weekly, read the Bible, serve at and beyond St. Matthew's, be in relationship to encourage spiritual growth in others, and give them my time, talents, and resources. Now go into the world to walk as the children of the light, the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.